Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Strategy podcast. My name is Patty, the badass marketing strategist. And as usual, I'm going to be the host for this episode. So in my previous episode, I got people asking questions about the ghetto. I mentioned that there have been some really low moments um, in my entrepreneurship journey. And today I'm going to tell you a story about one of my lowest moments uh, as a business owner and how I came out of it. This happened in 2021. So um, I usually launch a product on my birthday, which is um, July 30th and um, a discounted products, you know. So yeah, I had cashed out big time and I was like, oh, I have not taken a break, you know, so I'm going to take a one month break. So August 2021 was that one month break for me. You know, I had made a lump sum of money. So, you know, my accounts was looking nice. I felt I could take a break. I didn't have to worry about revenue and all of that. So one month of social media and just figuring life out, taking things easy. But I was still sort of working behind the scenes because as an entrepreneur, you you can never really take a break. Like you can take a break, but your, your brain is literally still working, you know, trying to find solutions to things. Um, So I was meant to resume on 1st September 2021. So there's this prayer, um, morning prayer that my church does, which is command your morning. So I wake up on 2nd September 2021. I came back online on 1st September 2021. 2nd September, I wake up at 5 a.m., you know, to go and pray do the command your morning and so i've set up my tv um i've set an alarm on my tv so the moment is 5 a.m my tv comes on that's what wakes me up so having to walk from the bedroom to the hall sort of wakes me up and then i'll get into it like i mentioned i love sleeping so i needed to find a way um around waking up early so i wake up and uh, i walk into my living room and i stepped in water Yes, my living room was flooded. It was raining that morning and my roof had been leaking for a while, but not any major leaks. But the the roof the roof has had leaked so much so that the leakage was in the bedroom and it had seeped into the 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 living room. I was so distraught. Whilst I was praying, I was mopping. (laughs) And the pressure from the roof leakage was so much so that almost every 10 minutes, I needed to mop up the water. I was so disturbed. So I sent a message to, to my landlady that, you know, the roof leakage has escalated and I cannot live with this anymore. And the first message the woman sent me, and mind you, this is something I had been um, complaining about since, let's say, May or even March 2021. So I had been complaining. They would send somebody to come and check it, and it wasn't, you know, getting any better. So I think the last person who came to fix it made it even worse. Here we are in a rainy season, and um, my roof is leaking. I didn't know what to do. Um they couldn't find a solution to it which meant that i needed to move out of that apartment as soon as possible because the moment it rains i need to put everything i had on hold to to sort it out like grab towels you know cancel all my one-on-one clients and i'm like it is this you know business that's paying the rent so it's not convenient if i have to put things on hold to sort this in us, very, very inconvenient. Um, It was such a struggle. The woman was not bothered. Um, She was not, she didn't care. In fact, the day that happened and I sent her a message, she just said, yeah, she wishes I could pack my things that same day and leave. I was like, really? Wow, I'm not owing you rent, oh, my dear. (laughs) In fact, I've paid one year rent in advance. So what do you mean? I'm just five months into living here or six. I can't even remember. 
and this is what you're telling me let me tell you something i'll save my story for accra landlords for another day um so i needed to find a new place i started packing up um looking for place on place and you know that if you live in accra finding a place to rent is not a walk in the park agents will stress you out um showing fee it's like so much stress and i was just resuming from work because mind you one month i had not um i've not worked so clearly there was no revenue coming in in august so september was supposed to be the month where i made some money the july to from the birthday sale i did i had because i had made small money i used to buy my phone this one 12 pro max <laughs> because um because i needed you know a better phone for content creation and all of that um so i was sort of cash trapped i had not prepared you know to move at that time and so that's lesson one always have an emergency fund always have an emergency fund do you have an emergency fund no you don't then start working towards it um so I started looking for apartments, like one stress after the other. And so mind you, um, somewhere early on in 2021, I had taken a mindset, you know, workshop with one of my Nigerian coaches. I had written down in my journal that I was going to move into a two bedroom apartment in a very prime location in Accra. Um, so one of my neighbors in the apartment that was leaking happened to be a real estate agent. So he was like, I'm going to show you a few properties. So the very first place he took me um, was the place I live now. When I saw it, I, I loved it instantly, especially because of the location. Um, prime area, roadsides, you know, surrounded by, you know, proper, proper supermarkets, um, malls and stuff. I wanted it, but the price was about three times what I was paying at the roof leakage place. So me being me, I was like, no, I'm not sure I can do this. <laughs> we'll save money and come and take it later. So the agents kept showing me places. There was one place he took me around Westlands. Um, Westlands was okay. The place was okay. The price was okay. However, there was a pub behind the house which is a not not for somebody who creates a lot of content right and i said no i can't do this place um there was another place at mccarthy i said no it's so far from town it's so far from my church so far from where i usually have my meetings i can't do mccarthy and um i found a place around so another agent took me to a place around Obojo. I said, like, mm, Obojo is not too bad. <laughs> so it was a chamber and hall. Uh, the landlord said it was going for a thousand two hundred um CDs. No, it was going for yes, thousand two hundred CDs for two years. Two years advance. I said, bro, I don't have it. <laughs> what I can do is the most I can do is a thousand CDs um, per month. And mind you, I didn't even have that much of money, you get? So I can do a thousand CDs um, with one year advance. And he said, okay. This one agreed to take that. And, you know, I, I find money. A friend helped me, you know, top up the money. I, like I loaned money topped up gave it to the man paid the man i still have a video of him counting the money on my phone and then um i told him i was supposed to move out by a certain time so that my previous landlady could give me my balance right so because you know that the moment we enter the next month they are going to start deducting people are so greedy when it comes to money yeah so um this man takes my money and says it was the apartment was not completed right so they needed to tile they needed to paint they needed to fix doors all of those things and they, he had a store a bunch of stores under the apartment i was supposed to be in so i was like this this is what's going to be i'm going to give you part payments 
for you to complete there please and i'm going to move my stuff from my current place to one of the stores and lock it up and then when you are done i move in i move my things upstairs and um i'm going to pay the balance after a month or i think two months that was something i was going to, i wasn't going to pay the full amount up front so um the man agreed one week later he calls and says that when he went to town things were pricey they had increased the prices of things so he cannot do a thousand cities anymore he wants to do 1200 cities and i said me in this accra i'll not pay thousand two for this property that you're giving me i'll not pay it <laughs> or like you are not fixing kitchen cabinets for me you are not doing anything like why should i pay that much for that neighborhood said no 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 disrespect to you if you live in that neighborhood but it just didn't make sense to me i felt like i could top up just a little bit more to get a two bedroom with that amount instead of a chamber and hall um so back and forth back and forth he said he's not gonna do it i said okay please give me back my money so i go for my money and now i have to move my things from his storage to another place because i've moved my things from my old apartment so why am i going to take my things my mom doesn't live in accra so <laughs> the next alternative was to move my stuff to somenia that was my last that's where my mom lives that was my last bit now during this phase where i've moved my things um to this man's store or storage i was patching with my big brother and my big brother was um, he and his friends, two other friends, had taken a three-bedroom and they had splits. So I couldn't really, you know, make use of this space because it's not, he's not the only person entitled to this space. So I remember so vividly how I used to sleep on the floor <laughs> in my brother's bedroom. Hey. That was a very difficult phase for me because now what next? I posted on my stories that I was looking for a, a, a warehouse or a storage facility where I could pay to put my stuff. And then one lady who was looking to work with me had reached out about um, coaching. Nana Sewa of Shamishu store was like, oh, she has a warehouse and that I can, where she keeps her stock so I can put my stuff. And I was like, my things are a lot, like my couch, my bed, and all of that. I don't think my things will fit in your warehouse. She was like, okay, um, my house is there. Like we are still building. So um this this room there's a room you can put your things in the meantime until you find yours this was a total stranger who only knew me on instagram she had only seen me on instagram it's not like her friend told her that oh i've used it she saw my sponsored ad and she followed me and she was willing to do this for me it was such a big deal for me and because i didn't i don't think i would do that for a total stranger so i was like wow so we moved my stuff from the this landlord's facility to Nana Sewe's home. Um, and then on so there was a, this Sunday that she picked me in her car. We went to roam the whole of her neighborhood trying to find, you know, accommodation. Charlie, it was such a tough phase in my life. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, like, I would cry. <laughs> All I could do was cry and pray because I did not want to go back um, to so many. Like, it's going to limit so many things for me. Um, internet is not so stable there. And my whole business is fully based on, like, I run my business fully based on the internet connectivity. Um, so one day I was out with Nana Sewe again and um the agent called me so this is michael the, the agent who showed me my current apartment and he calls and says um patty if you can can you get x amount of money to you know make a deposit and then we will give the lady a payment plan like i tell her that we are going to pay the balance over this period and i said yes if you can do that for me i'll be really grateful because I really wanted that place. So this guy went to beat down the price for me for about like 500 CDs off. And um, he was like, I should come to his office. He's gonna call the woman. The woman is based in the US. He's gonna call the woman and speak. we'll both speak to her. So we called the woman. 
um, she asked me what I do if I'm single all those things and she made a joke that oh she will give me to her son <laughs> and I laughed you know I was being polite because I needed somewhere to stay <laughs> and um, I would say that that woman is one of my major blessings in my journey because how many landlords or how many landladies would allow you to pay rent in installments it's it was crazy i was so excited and um, she was like i'm going to take you as my daughter it's totally fine um give the money to the agent and everything so fast forward about a week and a few months they needed to clean fix a few things fix cabinets and then I moved in. Hey, the day I moved in, I took a, a snap of my bedroom and I put the filter. You know the Snapchat Joe filter. <laughs> and I was like, I've made it. <laughs> I've made it in life because it's always been a dream to live in such a neighborhood, but I thought it was going to be far fetched. And here I was two years after in fact I quit in twenty twenty. A year after quitting my job, a year and a few months after quitting my job, I'm living in one of the most prime areas um, in the in Accra. So God bless my landlady. Like she's given me so much to be thankful for. She allows me to pay rent, quarterly rent now. Like I don't need to stress with and I think also because she lives in the US, she understands you know, some of these systems. Um, she's an amazing woman, top, top, top woman. Auntie Grace, if you ever listen to this, God bless you so much. So yeah, it was quite a very difficult phase for me because my mind wasn't even in the best of places for me to say that I'm going to book calls to generate money. Do, do you get it? It's like, I couldn't create content. I couldn't review. <laughs> I couldn't take calls from clients. It was crazy. I felt like all my friends, all the people who could support me had abandoned me and it was total strangers who were holding me during this phase. So the, I think the major lesson that I took from that experience was always have money saved somewhere as an entrepreneur because like life can hit you and because you are mostly the only person that is you know running the business as a startup a lot of things cannot go on without you do you understand what i mean if you are not there things cannot run the way they are supposed to do so always always have a contingency plan have money saved up for the rainy days and i want to also add that god always comes through when I was in the moment, things were really bleak. I ne I didn't think that I would... I thought that was the end of it. <laughs> um, and you know the funny thing? Once I moved in, it was... Let's hit the ground running. I launched a product and that was my worst performing product because, again, premature launch. The product was a great product, but bad timing. And I launched because I needed money. So that was a major lesson for me. I never launch any products just because I need money. I launch because it's solving a problem for my customers. Um, so it was a great product, but it didn't perform well. And I was looking for money to pay my, <laughs> to, you know, pay, sort out my bills, eat and all of that. And if I tell you it was the lowest of the lowest, tears, premium tears. And I'll still show up online and um, try to create content try, try to post show up for people um that needed me to you know pump to boost them you know in their thinking because a lot of these business owners that i work with i cannot show weakness it's and it's not because of bad intentions because a lot of them draw strength for me so the moment i am low it creates a certain picture in my in their minds so i can be weak but with just a trusted few people the people that serve as my anchors or my strengths so um dear clients if you are listening to this i can't be vulnerable with you but that is not your role 
I play that role in your life. You are not supposed to play that role in my life. So I have people now that I tend to when things get hard, when things get tough. So dear business owner, I want you to understand that we are all going through it. We we will all like we all go through the hurdles. Don't just look at what's happening on Instagram what's happening on the surface level to judge people's lifestyle and um, there are times that you know i'm showing up smiling but my account's balance is 0.00, .00. do you get it <laughs> there are times that um i've had a major launch like you've seen lots of people in my class but it was to pay a very hefty bill so i'm back to 0.00, .00. I've also come to understand that building is a gradual process. Um, so I may not be reaping the benefits now, but eventually you see me rolling with the big boys. <laughs> but yeah, so understand that entrepreneurship can be a, a very difficult thing. And one of the things that can keep you going is the power of your mind. So I'm going to land this plane on this note <laughs> it's party the strategies the badass marketing strategies and this brings us to the end of another episode on beyond the strategy podcast all right ladies and gentlemen let's come out of the gloomy mood uh tough situations create tough people so i'm really glad that i had to go through that phase really major learning curves for me once again my name is party the strategist and thank you for listening to this episode of beyond the strategy podcast don't forget you're a badass you can navigate anything that you find yourself in you hear from me again on another episode peace and love